For those who don't know me, I am uh, Michal Han. I'm director with the Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, I have particular responsibility for the Office of Evidence and Assessment. So what I'm going to try and do today is just give you set the scene for the, the next two days and give you an overview of the state of Ireland's water environment. I will be covering a number of different topics at a high level and for later on, I suppose, within the sessions that we'll have over the next two days, many of those will get covered in more detail. Specifically, what I want to talk about really is the kind of our latest assessment on water quality between 2013 and 2018. Some preliminary uh, indicators and results from our 2019 assessments, which we hope to finalize and complete and publish within the next coming weeks. A little bit more detail then on the nutrient trends and on agriculture. And then finally on finding the right measure to deal and in the right place to deal with water quality issues. So moving first really to the overall picture of water quality in Ireland and the latest assessments overall for the whole, for the whole uh, picture is that, you know, there's a mixed bag uh, in terms of rivers. 53% of our rivers are in satisfactory status, that's higher good status. 50% of the lakes and the estuaries only 38%. This contrasts really with the coastal uh, and groundwaters, which are in the 80 and 92% respectively, and the canals, which are 87%. So really it's, it's our freshwaters and our estuaries that seem to be in, in the most trouble. When you look back, and I look back here at the, the beginning of the water, water Framework Directive around 2000 and 2007 to 2009, which we use as the baseline, we're seeing that continuing difficulty with some of the some of our surface water bodies. Um, high status bodies are down by a third, and similarly, poor water quality status bodies are up by a third. And that makes the challenge of meeting a water, water framework directive targets so much more difficult. Most of this change is actually happening within the river water bodies. And we did see some improvements up to about 2012, but a decline since then. Um, within the rivers, as I said earlier, 53% in satisfactory condition. You know, we have, that's a down 5.5% since 2015, but it's down, it's down from 60% since 2012. Our high status water bodies in rivers have also dropped by a third and the, or have, have dropped by a third and the poor status water bodies have increased by a third. Our latest assessment in 2019 is showing that some of the bad sites uh, have increased from six to, to nine. Looking particularly then at the high status objective water bodies and you know, right across the different types of water from rivers, lakes, transitional coastal waters. I mean, we've seen a significant decline in the number of high status water bodies over the past number of years. And that leads, really leads to some really significant challenges for us. Just to give you a picture, if we look at the number of pristine water sites, that Q5 water sites in our rivers, in, in, in 30 years ago, we had 500 of these sites. In our latest assessment, that's down to, 30, that's down to 20. There is, however, some, some good news. Um, and the preliminary results from our 2009 Q values are showing some improvement. We have 204 sites improved, 90, however, did decline as well. Uh, this comes with a bit of a caution though. A Q value, which is a quality value for the rivers is not the same as an ecological status, it includes from among other things, uh, an assessment on fish and hydromorphology, and that could lower the status. Uh, also, this is year one of a three year cycle. Um, that means there's only 14 of the 46 catchments have been covered by this assessment. So that the rate of improvement we're seeing may not be carried through to all the others. And we might see that any, that any gains we're making in these particular catchments uh, could, offset, could be offset by poorer quality results in some other catchments. Further good news as well, perhaps in our priority areas for actions. And these priority areas, there's 109 of them, you may recall. Uh, selected through the second river basin management plan. The early indications are showing that the, uh, this, this approach, this priority areas approach, where we targeted investigation and targeted action, they appear to be working. 
and we are seeing some improvement in these areas you know through the 2013 2018 period a net improvement in our water bodies of 16.7 percent where we had a number of them 133 improved but we also had 51 declined you know, over that period now what is exactly driving these changes is really where the characterization work that the EPA and us have been doing. And more of this, I think, will reveal a deeper understanding of why we are, we are, we are seeing some improvements, but not always the improvements that we have when we target those measures. Particularly as well, Law Pro and the ASAP programs are working in all of these areas to try and restore water quality. And we will have a talk by Law Pro, Law Pro in the next session about their work on this way. Back, however, unfortunately, to the some of more of the, the bad news. And I want to look here really around the nutrients over the next, you know, over the next number of slides. That's in both our surface waters, our groundwaters, and into the into the marine environments. Um, what we're seeing here is changes in river nitrate concentrations and river phosphorus uh, changes as well. I mean, over the period 2013-2018, 25% of our rivers have increased their NNP concentrations. And at the same time, we have similar pattern in the lakes, 28% of lakes increased their pea concentrations over that period. The red dots here show where there's been a, an increase. And as you can see, there's, there is a, a geographical element to this, which I will come to as well in a moment. When we move to the groundwaters, it's that trend is continuing as well that we have seen in the surface waters. Uh, 2019 is showing further increases in nitrate levels in groundwaters. Uh, the number of groundwater bodies as well, not just the levels, but the number of groundwater bodies with elevated nitrate concentrations is also increasing. And this poses a risk, not just to water quality, but also to drinking water supplies around the country. And then moving into that marine environment down catchment, um, where again, you know, up to 2012, 2013, we saw a general downward trend but this was followed by an increasing trend in both total N and total P up to 2018. And, and, uh, um, you know, particularly we're interested, of course, on the, 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 nit the nitrate levels, you know, with the P levels kind of more stable over that period. So where are, is this nutrient coming from? What are the, where are the pressures? What's the source of these? Well, the characterization work that has been ongoing over the past number of years is really showing the pressures that are impacting on the water bodies and preventing them from achieving their objectives. Agricultural impacts are the dominant ones and they affect almost 800 different types of water bodies. Uh, agriculture, of course, is the, the most common land use type in Ireland. Uh, but also we have other pressures. Wastewater uh, is next, and particularly when you combine urban wastewater with domestic wastewater. But we do have other sources like hydromorphology and forest and other things. When we will have talks from the Department of Agriculture, from Irish Water, and a session on hydromorphology and physical restoration as well during the rest of the conference. And particularly then looking at maybe some nitrogen emissions from agriculture and, 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 and just in this graph is what is showing is a correlation between increasing cattle numbers, increasing fertilizer sales, in nitrogen fertilizer sales and increasing nitrogen emissions to water. Uh, and you can see that start trend really over the past number of years. And it's particularly relevant when with their discussions ongoing around at, uh, at Foodwise 2025 and the Agri-Food Strategy to 2030. Now, we should be remember as well at this point that it's, it's not just about agriculture, that the national population has also increased by a quarter of a million people since 2013, which means there's more wastewater requiring treatment as well, but it is a significant less of a source of nitrogen than the agricultural increase. You know, when you look back on the map earlier on, when I was showing the uh, the kind of the the, the nitrogen uh, levels in waters, in waters, we see a similar pattern here, and this idea that you know water quality issues are not the same type of issues are not a, a uniform across the country. And this map is showing the concentrations of derogation farms and catchments where nitrogen loss is not an issue, they're the ones in blue, and where it is an issue, the ones in red. And the charts are showing the losses of nitrogen in these blue and red catchments. 
Um, the data up to 2019, as you can see, is showing an upward trend. And particularly, I suppose, when you look then at the, the red catchments in the south and the southeast particularly, you've doubled the losses of nitrogen compared to the west. A thing that we are going to be needing to look out for, I think really as well, is if in 2018 you see a spike there, which occurred after the drought in 2018. And as we now head towards drought conditions for 2020, this is something we need to try and avoid this year. I suppose then moving to this idea of targeted agricultural measures to deal with some of these issues and to deal with some of the water quality issues. And the main message here is that we need to start tailoring the message to farmers, depending on the type of farming activity they have and the type of soil that is there. The blue areas here highlight where excess phosphorus and sediment uh, loss from poorly drained soils may be impacting on water quality in rivers and lakes. The orange areas highlight where excess nitrogen loss can occur through freely drained soils, and this nitrogen infiltrates the groundwater before being discharged into the river systems and, and onwards into estuaries and coastal waters. Now, although getting the right agricultural measure in the right place requires working at a farm level, I think this national overview map really can facilitate discussions around the the move and the continued move from a one size fits all approach for the country to a much more localized action to deal with specific water quality issues. So in summary, really what we're saying is that look, our water quality in Ireland remains and has remained for quite some time under a lot of pressure. We are failing to halt the declines in water quality and it is making the challenges of meeting our targets under the Water Framework Directive all that much more difficult. Of particular concern is that our high status water bodies have been severely impacted and these need urgent protection. On the positive side, however, there are earlier signs that the early signs that the work in our prioritised areas for action are starting to deliver improvements, but more work is going to be needed to really identify the exact action that is needed in those areas. And in, to reverse the trends that I've talked about there in nutrient discharges, it is then about moving and trying to understand what is the right measure is needed in the right place, rather than having one size fits all. So thank you for your attention for this uh, uh, presentation. Can I remind you that uh, if you have any questions to uh, put them on the app and we can deal with them at the end of the session. Thank you.